Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's the latest of our video calls. We are chatting to everybody while we're all stuck at home at the minute. I am delighted to say from Deftones, Frank is on the line. How are you, Frank? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Yeah, what time is it over there? I take it you're West Coast right now, yeah? It's, it's uh, 10 a.m. I'm just waking up. That's good rock star hours. I can take 10 a.m. That's that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I was not getting you up too early, man. Uh, we'll start this off in the same way we've started all of them, which is to, of course, say I hope you, your loved ones, everyone kind of taking care of themselves, staying safe and well in this uh, this madness we find ourselves in. Before we get into music, how has all this extended time at home been for you, man? How have you been occupying yourself these last few months? Uh, you know, it's kind of been good and bad. I mean, I've really enjoyed the time with family, you know, my girlfriend and her daughter, I think it's the longest I've ever been around, you know, in, in since we've been doing this. So that has been good. Um, just the whole mess of how everyone is, is taking it and uh, things being closed and people not taking care of their health or taking care of and being worried of other people's health. That's a whole nother thing. But um, I'm trying to use the time as, as using it wisely with what we have with who I have it with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so funny the amount of people I've spoken to on these, uh, you know, it is the longest you will have spent at home in a very, very long time. Yeah. Particularly a band like yourself, who've just been touring kind of relentlessly yeah, no, for it, so many years. Yeah, it's not, a, it's that, it's a, the longest consecutive stretch, you know, it's really crazy. Man, really, really crazy. Well, no, I'm glad everyone's kind of staying well where you are. And let's, you know, dive into the work, man. It's been good to see you guys have been able to have quite a prolific year despite the challenges of it, which is really, really good. Um, let's start with what's about to come, which is Black Stallion. You know, sure. obviously marking the anniversary of one of your most famous albums there. When did the idea come about that the way to do that was with this remixes idea? How did that idea come together for you? Yeah, that's been floating around for a long time. I mean, even before or while we were writing for White Pony, that idea has been flopping around. And that's kind of where the whole thing started from, where it's from us just shooting the shit and being like, man, we would really think it would be cool if Shadow remixed this whole record for us. You know, that was the the premise. And then it was pretty, you know, we knew that wasn't going to happen, but we tried to kind of keep it alive over the years and then come, you know, back to now where it's actually happening. You know what I mean? Obviously he's not doing the whole record, but it's led to this whole, um, you know, thing with a bunch of people who we really admire. And I think it's worked for the best that way, you know? Yeah, and it's what a guest list it is. And I, like, obviously a lot of people in there are, you know, friends of yours for a very, very long time. And we'll talk about a few individually, but just generally, how did that work? Was it a matter of, we know these friends will do an amazing job or were there newer artists you really want to get to know? How did that list yeah, form? A little bit of all of that, you know what cool. I mean? And I think there was a, a group of people that we knew we wanted involved. And there were some people that uh, didn't actually, weren't able to do it that were part of the initial idea but uh it's a little bit of both you know what i mean there's obviously older friends like shinoda who we knew who, who could pull something off and then we knew we wanted shadow involved but we weren't sure how that was going to work or if it even was going to um and then yeah all we just kind of put our feelers out through who we knew and management etc and, and uh and people we had uh had been admiring from just for maybe their remixes alone you know what i mean there's a lot of that too so uh it's always worrisome pulling off a remix record because um they don't always i think live up to what they're supposed to you know what i mean and i think uh this one uh whether you you're familiar with a lot of the artists or not who are who are doing their reinterpretations i think it cohesively works you know what i mean especially for that that record yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's got to be a daunting challenge. It's such a beloved record. And like you say, remixes, that is the challenge to make it sound cohesive. Yeah. Uh, and what I found was really interesting looking when that list of it initially came out, you're like, oh, well, these guys are all pretty experienced in the remix game. Do you know what I mean? Like, I imagine it was almost fairly hands off. You can kind of let them to their own I, devices to an extent because they are that experienced. I think that was the idea. I think uh, we wanted people to just interpret it how it was. I mean, because initially with the whole idea, again, coming back to Shadow was like, we were just wanted to give them the record, take the stems and uh, recreate a whole new record out of it. And I think that's where we were a little naive thinking, we're just gonna allow this guy to, that's basically a new Shadow record, you know what I mean? Just using the pony as a sample source. But um, uh, 
I think when we started realizing that there's a lot of people who wanted to be involved, it kind of made more sense. You know what I mean? You got people like everyone from Fanagram to Robert Smith to Salva to Clans and uh, and maybe people would never even heard of maybe like Trevor Jackson, who's been, you know, a big, I've been a big fan of his for years and been trying, I've been bringing his name up and finally we were able to kind of like make it work. You know what I mean? So really stoked. Yeah, no, what, what an amazing, amazing run of names. Let's talk about a couple of them because the initial one that stood out for me as, you know, a huge Cure fan as most yeah. people are seeing Robert Smith on there, such a legend. How well did you guys know him beforehand or was this another semi new collaboration for you? Well, that whole camp has been very, very nice to our camp. You know what I mean? We've, we've, we've years ago, we did the, um, what was it called? The MTV cure thing for the cure. Um, I remember that now that was the MTV icon thing, right? That's it. That's that was it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was that such was a cool really, idea. Just the fact that we were able to be part of that, that was really amazing. And, um, that went really well for us. And, uh, so there's kind of been that connection there. And then over the years, and then not too long ago, like last year or two years ago, we did his festival out here in Pasadena in Southern California. And just just very welcoming, very nice people. Um, so there's that love there between the mutual love, obviously. And then um, I think maybe management may have reached out to him or Chino may have reached out to him and he was down, you know what I mean? So I think just having those connections really help, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what an honor to have someone like that on on your record. Yeah. You know, I take it you must have been a, a lifelong Cure fan as well, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think most of us in the band are, are fans of the Cure. You know what I mean? And I think there's a lot of that. Like, there's a there's a lot of different people on this record that were all pretty much fans in one way or another. Even if you if someone in the band may not know them, they've heard them enough in the backstage you know, dressing room. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's the warm up music coming to the fore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, got to mention Shinoda as well, you know, a contemporary of yours and, you know, I'm sure an old yeah. friend of the band and everything. What was it like? Again, I guess that's a guy who you could almost just hand it off and go, we know this is going to be fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's He's been killing it in his production world now. And uh, uh, yeah, I think he actually reached to us, I think. You know what I mean? So and um, I think he personally wanted to do Passenger. So we were just like, sure. You know what I mean? Like. And it sounds great, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, no, Real Highline is gonna stand out immediately, of course, and as, yeah. as it should when it's someone like him of that caliber, it's unreal. But yeah, a real diverse, nice mix on there. Um, and I guess it also means, with looking back at White Pony in general, what I always find interesting asking people when they are reflecting on like a big anniversary year of something like that, what stayed the same with you guys? You know, What were the learnings with that record that we can look to even now and say, Oh, that's the thing we learned there and it stuck with us all the way through or did that not happen no i think there's a few different ones but i think the most important one was uh just trusting our gut instincts and believing in ourselves you know um i think that got a lot harder especially after white pony because that's when people started within the label and really paying attention to us and thinking we had to go certain ways but i think that for us was pivotal pivotal uh, because of just taking our chances uh, and believing where we should take the record, especially the climate of what was happening. And uh, it was just us trying to figure it all out. And thankfully it worked, you know what I mean? And and, and um, that's the one thing that stuck, I think, you know, believing in ourselves. Yeah, I think that's been the cool thing as well, seeing you guys mark the anniversary year in this way. It's kind of cool to see you you know, look back on the record and celebrate it a bit, but it's with something new. It's like pushing sure. forward. I take it that must have been a conscious idea. Like we want to take something that pushes us forward more than look back. Yeah, I, and it was, comes back to that same idea of always remixing the record and calling it Black Stallion. I mean, it was so obvious and yeah. and uh, to, for it to come to fruition uh, is pretty pretty cool, you know? But that's always been there. Uh, I think it's it's amazing how it ended up working out. Yeah. Do you ever see uh, that? I mean, I mean, it's difficult to say now, given the world we're in, but I'm intrigued to see if are those elements going to come into the live show, do you think, at any point? Do you see yourself playing around with those newer versions of the tracks at all? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, obviously, I haven't seen the guys in like seven months or eight months, you know, um, so we haven't even rehearsed or talked about anything like that. I, I don't know. I wouldn't rule it out, but I doubt it's something that's that's everyone's dying to do you know what i mean i think as a band we're there to to do what we do and how we do it and 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, you never know. Well, I guess the priority and I guess something you guys are going to be really hungry for is playing the new songs as well. Because, of course, the new record came out this year, man. And congrats on that, because it's I've said this to a lot of people. It's no mean feat being able to put out a record this year and in this climate. And you guys did it. And you managed to find a way for it to connect with the fans. And it seems to have gone really well for you guys. You know, talk to me about uh, about that release period and, and how you feel it's gone down with the fans. Yeah, I think there were some question, questionable times when we, we weren't sure if we were going to put it out, maybe wait to tour on it and all that. Um, and then there's the whole thing of sitting on older songs and just waiting for it. I, I don't think that kind of jived with us too well. Um, and I think our fans really wanted something, you know what I mean? And I think this is the time for them to give them something to, especially during this climate. Um, and I think it was a great decision to do that, you know what I mean? Um, I don't think everyone would do that artist wise, but uh, we we're really happy about this record. I'm really proud of the record. I know the rest of the guys are, and it's um, uh, we're happy to see the result from um, people's reactions and, and what it's doing. And uh, I think it's helping a lot of people. You know what I mean? I know it helped us. So. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, you know, I think new music being out there is more important than ever this year, really. If people sure. are able to release it like yourself, it's just a very, very welcome distraction, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. One of the key things, you know, we chatted uh, with Chino a little bit and a couple of you guys actually for the mag around when it was coming out. And one of the key talking points, of course, was you were back with Terry in the studio at the production desk again. Talk to me a little bit about that relationship and why you guys think that is is such an important element of what you guys do. Yeah, I I think uh, Terry's name has come up for every record that we've done, even since, you know, we stopped working with him. Um, He's just an amazing, amazing guy, you know, uh, great at what he does. But the relationship we have is really, really easy. You know what I mean? And we were able to be ourselves. And uh, there's always that. It's not weird, but there's a learning curve when you're getting to a studio, working with someone that you don't know. There's that time and learning curve where you have to figure out, you know, how compatible you are and the chemistry. Uh, just just being friends, let alone trying to be creative. Um, so that's always weird. But anyways, we, I think we kind of knew we wanted to go with Terry. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, the music was immediate and it was feeling good. And we wanted to just kind of keep that smooth transition, I think, because we knew and we knew how we, he could work and how we all could work together. So I think it worked out great, honestly. Um, we got a lot of love for Terry Day. He's made some amazing records over his career and we've just kind of uh, bonded as family. You know what I mean? a great dude so it's it's an amazing to do it again with him you know yeah an amazing collaboration to see it really is and, and you know normally i ask as well with people who've had a record out this year it's funny how so many when they've been releasing they already are thinking about what's coming next in terms of new music just because there is no touring and everyone's kind of stuck at home trying to think about what's next with you guys i know you tend to work a bit different you like the time in between you like to figure out what's coming next but have there been any discussions about well if we don't get to tour there Do you hasn't. think about it? Yeah, there hasn't. But I think that's probably on everyone's mind, honestly. Um, but you're right, though. We've learned that the time between the downtime is really detrimental to keeping this thing afloat. You know what I mean? Um, it's really easy to stay on the grind. And you, we learned that early on, I think. Um, you have to balance it, man. You know? And uh, everyone's got families. Everyone's got kids. And if you don't balance it, you end up losing all that shit. You know what I mean? So um, we've all lost it in one way or another. So we've learned to like, there's gotta be a balance, you know what I mean? So I think that's where we're living right now. No, I'd be interested to discuss before. I guess you said earlier, you know, you, you haven't really seen the guys much in the last few months. Yeah. Has it been kind of like, I, yeah, I'm not actually sure. Are you guys all spread out across the US? Is it really that difficult to, pretty, to figure pretty out? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Abe and I live together here. We don't live together, but we live in the same town, Sacramento sure. still. And everyone else is spread out. And uh, I've seen Abe a couple of times we, when we uh, got together to do that video. And he's very close to me. So we do get to hang out. We don't get to hang out a lot, but... Um, yeah, I haven't seen anyone else. You know what I mean? That's just that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, nature of the beast at the minute, isn't it? We just got to yeah. wait and see when when things are allowed. And, and speaking to that, you know, we're all very hopeful at this point. I'm trying to stay positive in terms of life plans. You know, I mean, we like who knows what tomorrow is going to bring, mm. but I'm staying hopeful it's all going to happen. And mm. one of the big things in the calendar for you guys, big return to Download Festival over here in the UK, such an important date in the UK music calendar. 
somewhere you guys have played multiple times at this point, always go down a storm. Uh, do you have any specific memories of that festival? I mean, what is it about that stage you think uh, thinks uh, works so well for you as a band? I don't know. Download is just, that's, you know, that's the big, that's the ultimate festival, at least for me growing up, you know what I mean? Reading old metal magazines and that, you know, download, man, that's, that's the one. And thankfully we've, it's, it's always been pretty successful for us when we've played, you know what I mean? Uh, we've had great shows uh, and we've just been building and building um, a lot of friends, family out there that we've, that we've made over the years. And it's just a great, great festival to be a part of, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the hell it's the, it's something about Donington, isn't it? This is it. It's yeah. just something about the history of that place. It just works so well, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, man. Have you guys thought about other live plans as well? I mean, again, it's so up in the air, but I take it you must have started thinking how these new songs in particular are going to play out on stage. Had you got as far as working out what the next show will look like for you guys? No. No, they okay, haven't. fair enough. <laughs> we really haven't. You know. uh, I think just like everyone, we're waiting to see how this turn comes around and uh, with everything in the world happening and we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? I know everyone's ready, but... Uh, we have yet to really solidify anything. So I think the big thing for us was putting out ohms and then releasing Black Stallion, you know what I mean? And that's where we're at right now. I mean, it's a hell of a productive year in this downtime. And again, I congratulate sure, yeah. you on that, man. It's it's really, really no mean feat being able to do not one, but two new records coming out in one year. That's very, very impressive, dude. Uh, it's really good to chat to you, man. Nice to get to know you. And, uh, you know, we really look forward to seeing you over here in the UK. I really hope it's going to be sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, yeah, best of luck with the release, man. And uh, we'll chat to you again soon. Yes, thank you so much. Be Appreciate safe. It. Yeah, you too. All right. All right.